Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to share my experience after the Nashville explosion that occurred on Christmas Day. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So as most of you already know, there was an explosion in downtown Nashville on Christmas morning. Now, I'm an early riser, so I was actually up about 5 o'clock that morning. I like to enjoy a cup of coffee and catch up on the local news. Uh, keeping up with current events. So I was actually watching the news when the first reports came in of dark smoke uh, hovering over downtown Nashville. And at first we didn't think uh, very much about it. As the morning went on, uh, like everyone else in the country, we learned uh, that this was actually an explosion and then uh, later learned it was an intentional attack. Uh, again, this was roughly 6.30 in the morning when uh, we were first starting to see the reports. It wasn't until later in the day, around 10.30 in the morning, uh, me and my wife were sitting in the living room. She's browsing uh, online using her laptop, and she asked me, she goes, do you still have an internet connection? I didn't even have my phone out at the time, but I went ahead and pulled my phone out and tried to connect to the internet, and sure enough, I had no connection. Well, no big deal. I mean, we experience internet outages from time to time. Uh, nothing that's usually a long duration, and it's usually back online in 30 minutes or so. So I went ahead and swapped over to my cellular data connection. But lo and behold, that one was down as well. It was probably 30 minutes to an hour later when we learned of the widespread AT&T service outage. Now I have ATT as uh, my home internet provider and as my cellular provider. So this event had taken us completely offline. Being Christmas morning, uh, I knew that I would have friends and family that would soon hear of the news and I wanted to alert them that uh, we were still okay. Uh, we were just, uh, we, you know, we didn't have any means of communications outside of ham radio. Now, as much as I love JSA Call, that was not the right tool in this particular instance. I love talking to other ham radio operators, but when I need to communicate with people that aren't hams, JSA Call's just not the best tool to use. Yes, we can send an text message using JS8 call, but that is a one-way street. So while I can get a message to them, I can't see any of the replies uh, to those messages coming back through the JS8 call system. So instead of using JS8 call, I went ahead and fired up WinLink. Um, now, most everything worked as I expected. I could send WinLink to regular internet email and had no issues getting uh, communications going both directions. I also sent out a couple of WinLink messages to other ham radio operators and later received replies from them. So that portion of WinLink was functioning. Uh, text messages going out with WinLink were working without any issues as well. The problem that I ran into was getting some of those text message replies coming back into the WinLink system. And this was all due to the spam filters that are built into WinLink. Uh, and I had sort of kind of been managing my whitelist, but ran into some issues with that. And I'm actually going to break out uh, the whitelist portion of this into a video uh, that'll be coming up soon. Uh, there's just a lot of details in there that I want to cover thoroughly, and it warrants its own video. 
But once I kind of figured out what was going on and that uh, text message replies were not being allowed back into the system, I quickly figured out a workaround with that. Uh, so instead of text messaging those people uh, and expecting a reply, I went ahead and sent them an email. Uh, now, the downside to email in today's society, if you really want to get somebody's attention and get it quickly, then you send them a text message. Uh, people tend to ignore email a bit more than they do text messages and may only check that once or twice a day. Uh, however, a text message is kind of right there in your face immediately, and most people will respond to that uh, in less than an hour. So what I ended up doing is I sent them an email uh, to their internet-based uh, email account, and I also, on that same connection, sent them another text message uh, because I was fairly certain my messages were getting through and it was just the replies that were getting uh, hung up by the spam filters. I uh, went ahead and made that connection, waited a few minutes and made another. Sure enough, I had replies coming in from my family uh, back into the WinLink system. So it wasn't uh, ideal and it wasn't what I was expecting, but it did get the job done. One other tool that I used uh, that I have covered here in the past, and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below, uh, but I used position reports uh, with the WinLink system. Position reports are pretty cool because uh, they get cross-posted to APRS, uh, the APRS system, and anyone with an internet connection can look those up on APRS.fi. Uh, so in those position reports, I was giving uh, updates twice a day, uh, letting everyone know that uh, both cell connections and internet connections were down. Uh, I would give a date and a time that I posted that position report, and I would also let people know how they could reach out to me. And in this particular case, uh, not only was I utilizing WinLink, but I did go ahead and fire up JSA Call. Uh, while it wasn't what I wanted to use to communicate with my non-HAM uh, friends and family, I did want that system up and running so that if other HAM friends reached out to me, they would be able to leave a message uh, on, on JSA Call or utilizing the JSA Call system. So I did end up using both of those uh, systems. Now, you might be asking yourself, why did I not utilize the APRS system uh, because I've covered on the channel before how to get a text message uh, in and out of uh, the APRS system with an APRS-equipped radio. Again, in this particular case, that wasn't uh, the right tool to use. Because internet service was disrupted in this area, uh, my gateway, my uh, APRS gateway was offline. It could still digipeat, but it couldn't get anything into the internet. Uh, and I did try some messages from my handheld uh, and was unable to uh, get messages in and out successfully. Now, that is probably due to the fact that uh, the other APRS gateways in the area had also lost their internet connection. And if you're unfamiliar with the way APRS messages work, uh, when you send an APRS message locally, uh, then it will probably never hit the internet. It'll go to the Digipeter, be Digipeted back out. Anybody within simplex range of that Digipeter would be able to receive the message. However, when you want to use a service like SMS GTE, which is what's utilized uh, to send text messages to mobile phones, or you want to send a message long distance over APRS, well, the internet is involved in that. Uh, and if you don't have internet connections at your gateways, well, that's going to fail. So uh, again, in this particular case, it just wasn't the right tool to use. Now, in addition to utilizing uh, WinLink and JS8 Call, uh, I did use a couple of other tools to stay informed. We never lost TV because I haven't had cable in over 10 years. Uh, we rely either on internet streaming 
or an over-the-air antenna, uh, over-the-air broadcast that we pick up via antenna. So I didn't have internet streaming, obviously, but I was able to pick up local news outlets uh, with TV. Early on in the event, though, I didn't know exactly what was happening or if this might start affecting power. Uh, would it take the TV stations offline? All of this was just unknown, so I started preparing uh, kind of a contingency plan just in case that happened. Uh, so I grabbed my old AM FM radio, stuck batteries in it, and started scanning through the stations. And I did find a station that was pretty much doing 24-7 uh, coverage of the event as it was unfolding. So once I identified that station, uh, we did still have TV, and in fact, we never lost it through this entire event. So I just went ahead and switched the radio off but uh, had things cascaded further, I was able to utilize it to gather information uh, about what was happening locally. Now, another deficiency that I found in uh, kind of my emergency communication preparations was local comms with non-ham radio operators. Uh, so two of our three children um, all of them were in town uh, during this event. Uh, two of the three have AT&T service as well, and we found ourselves unable to communicate with them. So going forward, what I may look at doing is acquiring a GMRS license uh, and purchasing some additional radio equipment that could be deployed. Uh, one of our children lives in Colorado, so it's not going to work, obviously, in that case. But two of them are here locally with us year-round. And it would be nice to be able to deploy GMRS radios uh, at their homes and establish communications between the three of us. It might be something else that uh, I look at, uh, you know, in a larger event. Maybe we also want to communicate with neighbors close by to us. Uh, so I may start talking to some of the neighbors and encouraging them to look at getting a GMRS license. Uh, we could also utilize little FRS radios, uh, provided we are uh, in close enough proximity that those would work. But if you're just talking about going uh, next door or across the street, even the little uh, bubble pack FRS radios might be a good fit. Uh, but that was a deficiency that I identified uh, as being able to communicate with non-hams that are in a close proximity to us. Now, one other thing uh, that I did not run into any issues here, but one other thing that I do want to mention to you, and that's having plenty of spare parts on hand, whether that's extra coax or extra wire, or uh, maybe extra power poles. Whatever you think you might need, you want to be sure you have that on hand. Uh, for instance, early on, uh, we were uncertain if we would lose power or not because of this event. Uh, so I had recently purchased another new lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, but it was still sitting there in the box with its original connectors on it. So to be able to hook that up to my ham radio, it was going to need power poles. And that was just one of the things I was able to take care of that morning because I had enough spare pieces and parts on hand to go ahead and get the power pole adapters connected up to that battery. More often than not, these are not nationwide emergencies, disasters, and loss of communications. Typically what we're faced with, as I was in this particular case, is a regional issue that has occurred. Uh, now, in this particular case, we were fortunate. It was not a complete grid down scenario. We maintained commercial power throughout the entire event. Uh, it was only communications with uh, internet and cell phones that were down, and that only impacted uh, roughly about half the people. Some of the other carriers did have some issues uh, during this event, but it wasn't a complete loss uh, of service like AT&T was. Some of the other things uh, that I heard people experienced was uh, problems when they went to purchase things 
uh, whether that was groceries or clothing or uh, gasoline. Uh, if the merchant didn't have internet service, they were unable to accept uh, credit and debit cards because they had no way to process those transactions. So another good thing uh, that you might want to think about is having cash on hand to get you through uh, these little brief periods. Personally, I didn't experience any of that, uh, but that was a potential problem. So there you have it, guys. That's kind of a, a brief look at my experience through uh, the aftermath of this explosion. I hope you guys uh, learned something through this, uh, and I hope it helps you to think about your emergency communications plan just in case you're faced with a situation like I was on Christmas Day. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.